Now, I want to share this, Doug. I would say that the most important thing I've ever written in my life is Genesis 6 Giants. But that was the left hand, if you will. The right hand is Xenogenesis. Notice they both have the word Genesis. One is the old age. I want to correct something. It was Diodorus Siculus, and he lived between 30 and 90. I said... uh, I was quoting some other birthday. You know, I got these in my head. I apologize. But I was quoting Opuleus, O-P-U-L, I'm sorry, A-P-U-L-E-I-U-S. Why, that's critical. Do you know what the, uh, that antiquity absolutely traces to the downfall of Rome? And some of the, some of the issues were this, that the gay agenda, especially in, on Opuleus' time, and I'll post a link to it, But the point is is that it was the effemination of men who called each other women that sought young boys to have sex with to increase their, if you will, powers. And it was the Romans even as perverted as they were, and you can read that in Romans chapter 1 in the book of Romans, the New Testament. Even they were disgusted by the fact that these were men who dressed like women, put on Makeup like women. Now, does that sound like someone very famous just happened? Notice the timing of Caitlin's outing. Notice the timing of the ruling of the Supreme Court. Notice the timing of Tim Alberino's quest into South America being deciphered in the United States. Notice all the information you got about a rainbow. And ladies and gentlemen, I there is no way to make it clear. The gates of hell are open. What we are writing about, what we're producing the video about, it will be a step-by-step. I think it is so timely, and by the grace of God, God has provided us the right people with the right testimonies at the right place at the right time. I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. Go ahead, Tim. I think it's interesting, too, that... uh, um Recently, I don't know, I don't remember how recently, but sometime in, in modern history here, um, in certainly my generation, it was discovered, it might even have been just in the last decade, you probably know, Steve, it was discovered that Pompeii was basically the capital of sexual perversion and fornication and, and all manner of sexual perversion and homosexuality and and they've been able to confirm this unequivocally. And it was such a scandalous place. I mean, there's pornographic paintings all over the walls that they've discovered. And Pompeii, it's, is it a coincidence that Pompeii was literally buried under the, 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 the molten lava of, uh, of, the, of the volcano that erupted in its vicinity? I mean, it's, it's, what's, what's really frightening is that there's a couple of things that demand a response from God. And this is apparent in the Bible, that demand, that elicit a response from God. And it's, and, it's, and it's a swift response, and it's a terrible response in terms of its ferocity and, 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 the, and the, the destruction that, that follows. And, and the two things that you see over and over and over are the, the sacrificing of children uh, i.e. abortion in our modern uh, vernacular and and homosexuality and the, and the pervasiveness of of homosexuality those are two things that always that always provoke a response and those are the two things that that basically our cup not only ours in the United States but uh, many different nations certainly in different nations in Europe is overflowing at this point with those two abominations and and i agree with steve you know it literally was it might even have been on the very same day steve that i was uh discovering this verifying information about that story of the sodomite giants that were destroyed in the lightning and in the and in the brimstone is what some of them say it might have even been the very same day that the that that the uh uh that homosexual marriage was 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 legalized in the united states and it, 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 there are so many examples of the of the 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 wrath of God coming swiftly after a nation's cup begins to overflow with those two particular abominations, among others. But those two particular abominations are 
are are are seem to be the most provocative uh, in terms of uh, provoking God to anger. There are, of course, many others, and of course, those are rooted in pride, which is which is uh, the ultimate uh, downfall of of all those, which is the ultimate source of all perversion. So, it, it, again, it's it's a frightening thought to see how far we've come. I mean, we know that Rome was extremely, excessively debauched before its downfall. Obviously. Babylon, obviously Egypt, these civilizations, they get to a point where they become so debauched that the only recourse is to level them, to destroy them. Uh, that's part of the plan. The enemy always does that in Scripture, in the context of Scripture, the way that the devil would most frequently attack uh, Israel wasn't to come himself because God was protecting Israel. It was to get the Hebrews, to sin against God, to commit such profane abominations that it provoked God to anger. That was the agenda. That was the way that the devil uh, would operate against Israel. And that is still the M.O., is to get nations and peoples to get to such, to, to, to come to such a debauched state where a response must come from heaven. And you can imagine, you know, th these giants, going back to the story of these giants that landed on the coast of Santa Elena in, in what is now the peninsula there in uh, Ecuador. These guys were so wicked, so vile. If you want to get a sampling, just a sampling, and this was, po this was post-flood, a sampling of the wickedness that Steve has been talking about for years and years and years and years that's coming, that the, the, the evil that's erupting, the gates of hell, a sampling is in the documents here that we have of the uh, of the perversion of these giants and the bloodlust of these giants. I mean, they were literally just devouring the natives, raping their women to death, obviously, being humongous giants. Um, they walked around naked. I mean, there's so much detail in these documents about what they ate, about the nets they made. They caught sharks and other large fish off the coast, they, how they built their houses, and how they were decimated. And it does say, and I read it, and it does say to remind everyone that even the natives, this is the story of the natives, not of the Jesuit priests, of the natives, that a young man, somebody, a young handsome man, an angel, appeared in the sky and began to throw lightning down on these giants. And that has a biblical context. There's, there's the story um, of David where he wasn't supposed to take the census. He, the devil enticed him to take the census. And as a result, God gave him an option. I, gotta, I have to judge you for this. And the people, A, you let me judge you or, or directly, or B, I let your enemies come. And, of course, David chose wisely that God would judge him because he knew that God would have mercy. He knew he could solicit God's mercy, which is exactly what he did, but he couldn't solicit the mercy of his enemies. They would be merciless. So, uh, an a long story short, an angel appears, I, I think it was over Jerusalem, somewhere in Israel, appears in the sky and begins to, has a sword and begins to cut people down. And that is, again, that's, a, that's the context of what was going on with these giants. An angel appeared in the sky and began to rain down lightning and fire on these guys. And let me remind everybody, this is not some legend, according to the Chronicles. And these are the sorts of Chronicles that we base so much of what we think we know about the, uh, about the, his, the, the events of Rome, the, the historical accounts of this nation and that nation and this famous battle. These documents are on the same level of those kinds of things. These were chroniclers, and in many cases, those chroniclers were chroniclers of Rome, of the, of the Catholic Church. And these guys are telling us that this was, this was a pervasive, uh, this was a... a, a a ubiquitous knowledge, and then it was confirmed. They, they were able to confirm it. They found the bones, and somehow they were able to verify that those bones were charred, that they were, that they indeed had, that those giants indeed had been destroyed in the fashion that the Indians had been telling them. And I just wanted to recap that story and, and stress the fact, again, that this is not a legend. This is a fact. 
and 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 it is indeed amazing that that it's surfaced at this point in time. Tim, thank you very much. Steve, go ahead. Well, Doug, all we're giving everybody tonight is the first first sentence and the first paragraph. Uh, I think that as the Lord leads again, I, I say this. Some people think I'm kidding. I am believing uh, a man has nothing except he receive it from above. The grace that God has shown to Tom Horn, the grace that God has shown to Tim, and to me, he's brought us all together. Tim brought, uh, the Lord brought Tim to me uh, because I was looking for someone that could basically step into my shoes and I could duplicate my effort, obviously, uh, you know, to doing this work. It, it's impossible. It would have been impossible for me to do it. It would have been impossible for Tom. And Tom said, if it hadn't been for you, Steve, I wouldn't even gone into this. So all I'm saying is this. I say that to shut the mouths of critics, Okay. Those of you that have never battled the powers of darkness won't understand why I just said that. But when you've got the headlines, let me say this. Tonight, we're talking about Celts. We're talking about they were called Sumerians. We're talking about the Celtic giants. We're talking about the homosexuals. You want to know there was a female giant. Her name was Boudicca. She just wiped out a lot of Romans until she was killed. But what's the shot of this, Doug? One day before I'm going on your show, you see, I'm not trying to make anything fit, but when everything fits, the puzzle is going together as, I believe, the in, incredible uh, knowledge and love of God for his creation. Ancient monster graveyard unearthed, Celts create, or Celts, some people pronounce it Celts, create hide out, I'm sorry, create hideous beasts using dead animal parts as offerings to the gods. They're claiming that they took the skeleton of one animal, put it together with the other, and that's what they put these things together. I don't buy that, because in the days of the British Isles and the giants, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump under the candlestick, I pee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an a Englishman or the famous giant Finn McCoo an Irish giant, a little bird telling me, a little bird told me so. That's a, that comes from a giant story. So all the idioms, colloquialisms, and different words that have passed into our vernacular come from this time period. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to share this. I believe, and I'm serious about this, I believe the time is so short. I can't say when the giants will appear. I know they already exist. I know they're alive. Uh, on the planet, I know there are special teams that at a certain time were designated to go and, and, and hunt those things down before they hunted us down, but that's no longer in play simply because God has withdrawn his hand from this country. But I, I would say this, Genesis 6 Giants, the second edition, is the most important book I've ever written to lay it out in a historical foundation. Xenogenesis with the whole Langley, Mr. Langley. Uh, even uh, Will, my friend, said uh, uh, the children of Mr. Langley didn't even know what their dad did, but he sent me an email saying they listened to the program and they thanked me for honoring their father. I wish I could have been by Will's uh, aside. It wasn't meant to be, but God bless you, Will, for your faithfulness. May the God of heaven reward you in, in, in every way. But please, ladies and gentlemen, Order those two books. Are that critical? It's critical for you to understand that knowledge is power. The whole techno uh, decadent society is based around knowledge. Why do you think all of the cyber attacks that Ross Powell and I talked to? What do you think about all the databases being violated? It's all knowledge. God wants you armed with knowledge. Therefore, you won't be taken in fear and despair when this stuff starts to appear. And by the way, Doug, based on my emails. Christians are having more supernatural evil encounters, and they said, what's happening? This has never happened to me before in my entire life. My answer to all of you who are experiencing this, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Resist the devil, he must flee, and understand. Now you know what the gates of hell are opening are all about, but Jesus promised us this that they would not prevail against his body of believers, nor would they prevail against the believers who are told there's power in the name and through the blood of Jesus Christ.